expert, if you keep a substantial amount of cash in the bank, you could actually be doing yourself a huge disservice. And to talk about that, we've brought in our certified financial planner, Andrea Cave from Preferred Financial Group. It makes sense. If you just have cash sitting around in a checking or savings account, it's not doing a whole lot for you. Yeah, you're losing your buying power on that money. If you think about it, even just one year ago where the price of gas was, in a really low interest rate environment, if you keep a lot of money in the bank, more than just the emergency fund you need for liquid cash, mm -hmm. you really are losing dollars every day. So when it comes to inflation, how does that affect what somebody earns? Well, right now, inflation and interest rate are sort of like a ball and chain. Where one goes, the other will follow. It's a chicken and egg. We're not sure which causes which, really. But if you're earning right now one, between a half a percent and one and a half percent in the bank, inflation based on the CPI last year was about three percent. So you're losing about a half, one and a half percent every year, even if you're getting a high interest rate. What's a good rule of thumb for that threshold of the amount of cash you should have, and over that you need to find another place for it. What do you want to keep on hand? Well, cash, cash reserves, I think I've stated before, when you look at what kind of an emergency fund you might need, if you're, a, it, maybe it's six months mm -hmm. of whatever your real true living expenses are, not necessarily your paycheck, anything over and above that you can invest. There's a spectrum of different investments that all carry a different risk and risk adjusted return. And you can start looking at some other alternatives to just cash in the bank. So if you're a long term plan, let's say to save money for a down payment on a house, uh, is there is there a way to make that money grow without being penalized for taking it back out? Sure, there's all kinds of investments from, as I stated, there's a whole spectrum of investments from conservative like bond, bond funds, real estate, trust, those types of things, mutual funds, index funds, you name it. There's short and long-term investment options for all of those. It's just finding out what you're willing to accept for risk. That's the first, I think that's the groundwork for investing and then educating yourself from there on what the up and downside to everything is. And what's a good place to put your money if you think you might want to have to get it out quickly? Well, I mean, bank instruments are short term, but there are all types of uh, investment options. Like for example, even just a dividend paying stock as an example, you can get in and out without any type of a penalty or much cost if you, okay. You know, if you do work with an advisor, they can maybe help you with finding the best place to put that money, depending on when you'll need it and what your time horizon is. But keep in mind, for people who leave the bank, they often think the next best place for them to invest their money is in bonds. But in a rising rate and interest, interest rate environment, bonds are sort of like a teeter-totter. So if interest rates go up, the value of your bond can go down. A quick and dirty rule of thumb with, with like a long-term government security, 1% mm -hmm. interest increase on for interest rates is about a 10% decrease on the face value of that bond. So keep that in mind. A lot of research. Good advice. <laughs> Andrea, Be educated. Uh, do you have a question for our experts? Email them, ask the expert, todaystmj4.com. You can also leave a voicemail. Number to call is right there on your screen.